So welcome, I'm Desiree Brown. I'm Senior Manager of Communications here at the Tory Birch Foundation. I'm really excited to have Erica Tubbins here returning to our series. Um, Erica is a sales strategist for rebels who reject the status quo, as well as host of the BS Free podcast, Sell It Sister. Uh, she works with service providers, consultants, and coaches to create custom growth plans that avoid complex systems and sleazy sales tactics while also helping them battle burnout, um, which is super important, especially right now. Uh, so we're so thrilled to have Erica here to help us elevate your sales experience to increase customer retention and referrals. Um, and after today's presentation, just a reminder, we will have plenty of time for Q&A. So to be sure to ask your questions using the Q&A box and any comments you have for each other or um, for Erica, put that in the chat box, which um, you'll see you can set the settings in the drop down. make sure it says everyone so that we can all join in on, on the conversation. Just a reminder, uh, today's session will be recorded. Um, so watch your inboxes for the replay link as well as something very special from Erica. Um, and so Erica, over to you, let's get started. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Desiree. Thank you, Tory Birch Foundation for having me back. I am absolutely, thrilled to be here and I'm going to get started sharing. I absolutely love the Tory Birch Foundation and um, so appreciative, like I already said, to, to be back here, uh, dropping, dropping gems, dropping uh, sales wisdom for all your fabulous folks. And I just want to say a quick thanks to everyone who is tuning in or watching the replay. Uh, I really um, am really excited to share all this with you because it is going to change the game for you and your business revenue. So let's get into it. I know Desiree already introed me a little bit, but I love working with change makers, people who are shaking up the status quo. They want to be that go-to person for the unique and innovative way that they approach their work, that they approach their industry. And I love helping take what you do and then expanding it in really amazing ways. And I do that by uh, crafting high impact, sustainable growth strategies with you and, you know, really making things customized because I've been running businesses of all kinds and sizes for nearly 20 years now. And so I know that the only perfect way to operate is the one that is perfectly aligned with your unique strengths value and vision. Speaking of values, a really important thing for me to mention are the fact that my values are integral to what I do. So even if you go to my website, you can see a whole tab for my values, but the ones that I really cherish and put kind of above all else are honesty and integrity, which is why everything I teach is based on experience rather than theory. So if, if you're hanging around my orbit, just know that like, you know, what you see is, is what you get. Um, I'm, I'm all about, you know, keeping it as real as possible because I think that transparency and honesty and integrity helps us all to really thrive. So I like to pair solid strategy with really simple tactics, right? Because if things are complicated, if they're overwhelming, that isn't sustainable, right? So solid strategies paired with simple tactics, that is where the money magic happens. And I'm also really passionate about helping people run thriving businesses because like it or not, money is powerful. Um, and running a successful financially sound business that doesn't, that serves the clients well and doesn't exploit or exhaust anyone, in my opinion, is a form of revolution. So as we get into this today, I would love for you, um, if you use Instagram, so I'm on there, Erica Tebbins Consulting, I know it was on um, the slide that, that, that Desiree showed, if you get any aha moments, um, any like big takeaways, anything you want to capture, I would love it. Feel free to screenshot and then post and tag me, and you'll see how this comes into play with what I'm talking about today. So. Creating raving fans should not be an afterthought. First and foremost, this is something that by keeping it front of mind, by being intentional with it, it is going to be an absolute game changer for the growth of your small business. They are your most valuable asset for consistent long-term growth. And I'm going to prove it to you as well. 
But first, what is a raving fan? So a raving fan is somebody who helps your business grow organically via the power of word of mouth. They are people who are going to rave about you to other folks, and they often will come back and spend more money with you in the future. But I want to really break this down so that you can get a really, really, really good sense of the actual power of raving fans. I don't want you to just take my word for it. Okay. So uh, first, tell me in the chat, because um, you know, you're all small business owners, right? You're wearing a lot of hats day to day, week to week, all of that. So who often feels overwhelmed keeping up with the sales and marketing part of your business, right? The part that you have to do in order to be bringing new clients in and new customers in all the time, right? Especially with, you know, social media uh, challenges, things like that. Oh, in the, in the chat, every day I'm shuffling. Yes. Um, you know, algorithms change, new platforms come along, uh, I, you know, things are, things are constantly changing in this really fast digital landscape of business. Yes, people are saying exhausting for introverts all the time, so overwhelmed. Yes, 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 right? So, yeah, Virginia says hard to keep up. Yes. So I have really excellent news for you. While it's probably unlikely that more tech and social uh, media changes won't be coming. There will probably still be new platforms, new algorithm shifts, new trends, all sorts of things like that, right? So that is probably going to keep happening. However, when you focus on raving fans and really building raving fans for your business and your brand, that is going to allow you to have this timeless system in your business that always leads to sales, right? So that is not reliant on an algorithm or trends or other changes because raving fans and creating them is rooted in how business has always been done, which no matter how technologically advanced business gets, business is still people buying from people, right? So when we focus on cultivating relationships with people, we come out on top. So let's, let's get into it here. I'm going to I'm about to blow your mind with some stats so you so you could know what I'm talking about. So 92% of consumers believe suggestions from friends and family more than advertising. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't be advertising, you shouldn't be marketing, but I hope it gives you a little, you know, breath of, you know, a sigh of relief in a way that you don't have to solely rely on your advertising to help you grow your business. 74% of consumers identify word of mouth as a key influencer in their purchasing decision. And beyond friends and family, 88% of people trust online reviews written by other consumers as much as they trust recommendations from personal contacts. So I'm pretty sure everyone here, at least some point or another, has looked at a Yelp review or a Google review or something, right, where you are reading feedback from a total stranger before you decide to uh, purchase that item or make that dinner reservation, right? So this is, this is powerful stuff. Now, once people are knowing about you from word of mouth and they've become customers, here are some really cool stats about what happens from people just being aware of your brand via word of mouth to actually like now they've shopped with you and they are a raving fan and they're sticking around. So repeat customers have a 60 to 70% chance of buying versus 13% for a new one, meaning it actually costs more to always be trying to get in new customers and clients versus taking really good care of your existing ones. Again, not saying you shouldn't be focused on bringing in new people, but this is also why it's so important to nurture the ones who are already there. Repeat customers also refer 50% more people than one-time buyers. If this is blowing your mind, please tell me in the chat because like these stats, even though I know, know them, I've known them for years and years and years, they still blow my mind every time I see them. And lastly, repeat customers spend 300% more, right? Yes. Mind blown. That is wild. Yes. Everyone in the chat is like, wow. <laughs> Tell me more. And 
uh, not only are your repeat customers purchasing more over time than new customers, they likely trust you enough to purchase your more expensive products or services. So this is great. So whether you sell a product or a service at the like the longer time that goes on, you're probably like, okay, cool. We've got proof of concept. We want to expand. We want to do different things. And you might want to bring in some higher tier offerings. These are where your repeat customers are going to be perfectly poised to take advantage of those. Okay. So how do we get there, right? How do we make this magic happen? That is what I'm going to be sharing. So the three things I'm focusing on today are your brand presence. So this is how you're going to attract the people most poised to become raving fans. Then visibility and community. So this is how we look at intentionally the opportunities to get in front of those aligned people so they can learn about you and then become future clients. And then lastly, the buyer experience. So once someone is ready to purchase, this is ensuring that their experience, experience leaves them raving about you, telling other people and excited to return. So it might seem a little bit counterintuitive to not start with the buying experience, but it's really not because Honestly, the buying experience is like the last 20% of the equation. Creating raving fans actually starts a few steps earlier. It starts with your brand. And I want you to know that a brand is so much more than just a logo, fonts, and colors. Your brand is really meant to convey a message that is going to stand out to perfect fit potential clients. Not everyone. I'm really gonna like, hammer this home. Not, not everyone. This is about the perfect people. So when I spoke uh, last year for Tory Burch Foundation, all about sleaze free selling, I dropped this uh, line in there that I always say with my clients, which is attract the best, repel the rest. And it's one of those that makes everyone go, huh? What? Erica, what are you saying? Repel? I don't want to repel anyone. I'm trying to make sales here, right? But this is something that is so crucial, even though it seems a little bit counterintuitive, right? So I want you to think about the kind of person that is most poised to become a raving fan of your brand, right? When you focus on ex like exclusively just attracting these kinds of people, you are going to preserve your energy because we all have to market. We all have to sell. We all have to be thinking about bringing in new clientele all the time, but we only have so much energy and time and money to be able to do that. So rather than spreading ourselves too thin on trying to attract everyone, focus on trying to attract the best folks for you and your brand. And then also there should be a little bit of an element of repelling wrong fit folks. And this doesn't mean being offensive or telling anyone they're not welcome. It's not that. It's just that the overall vibe should speak to a certain kind of person and not to other folks who are really not going to get what you're all about in the first place. And really, it's important to think about how you are going to stand out because we all have competition, right? Even if the thing that we do, like even if the way that we approach it is really unique or really innovative uh, or shifting the culture of our industry in some sort of way, like my clients are, we still need to be able to stand out so our perfect fit people know that we exist, right? So that they can even find us in a crowded marketplace. So a lot of times people get really um, weird about selling because they feel like, oh, selling is I'm having to like convince people to give me money. And that feels really weird. No, 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 no. When we are speaking to our perfect fit people, the people who get it, they get our brand, they get what we're all about. It allows us to not feel like we're convincing. We're simply just sharing. We're simply just talking about what it is that we do. And you're also going to make it easier for people to find you and to see why you are different and why they should pay attention. So I want you to think a little bit about this, right? Think about your brand right now. And again, I don't want you to get bogged down in like, oh no, like the, you know, the brand fonts and the logos and the color. Like, I don't want you to, to go down a rabbit hole of stress and feeling like you have to overall everything like that. That's absolutely not it. But just think right now, 
as your business is, how are you positioned in the marketplace, right? Like where are you meeting clients on their customer journey, right? What is the core message of your brand? What are some of your values and what is the overall vibe? And it's totally okay if you're like, Erica, I cannot think of this all in five seconds. That's fine. I'm just, you know, I, I would say take some time like this week just to sit down and really think about this, right? Think about these things. And if you're not sure, then you know, at least it's a really good opportunity to look into cultivating or refining that part of your business a little bit more. But I'm going to give you some examples to help you if you're still like, um, I'm not so sure about this, Erica, like, please, please help me, please give me some examples. So I want you to know that even with the fact that we all have competition, there is enough to go around for all of us, right? The key is to be boldly yourself and own your corner of the market. And when I say own your corner of the market, I don't mean again, that you have to, you know, if you sell soap, you have to be like, you know, the, the top soap maker uh, in the country or in the world or anything like that. But I mean, for your people with your positioning, all of that stuff, think about how you can become the go-to person for what you do, but in the way you do it and for whom you do it for. So now I want you to think, uh, and you, you know, you could do this later on too, but think of like one category of, of a type of business where you spend your money or where you see regular advertising, right? So for instance, handbags, coffee shops, hotels, cars, skincare, and just get curious, look up different brands, right? So this is where you get to see some examples that will then help to inform the, your answers to these questions for yourself. So even if we think about, you know, company like Tory Burch, right? Just thinking about the vibe of that brand, right? There's a lot of other people that sell gorgeous handbags and shoes and accessories. But tell me in the chat, when you think of Tory Burch company versus Tory Burch foundation, what are some adjectives? What are some words you would use to like describe the vibe, right? And then also, can you think like, what is another company that sells the same stuff or even like a handful, right? And think about what words you would use to describe them, right? And this way you can see there's no right and there's no wrong. There's just differentiation because Tory Burch isn't trying to advertise to literally every person on the planet. Tory Burch knows who their ideal client is and they are going to speak to them through the vehicle of the brand that they have chosen to be. So yes, timeless, on point, customer focused and responsible, stylish, quality, classic. A lot of people said quality. A lot of people said classic, fresh, elegant, high end, beautiful prints. But yes, so you see, right? The, like they're obviously Tory Burch doing a great doing a great brand. There's a lot of overlap here in the words people are using to describe them, right? And it's great that there is differentiation. It proves there is enough to go around. So now that you know how you're different, even if it's just a tiny little bit right now, you know how you're different. You know how you want to show up in the market with your brand. That is how people can start to resonate with you when they know you exist but we got to get you in front of more people, more of those perfect people so that they can know about you. So who is familiar in business with the idea of no like, and trust? Let me know in the chat, but this is a really common concept. It's you know, been around forever where you really have to make sure first and foremost, that people know about you. Then they have to figure out if they like you and what you're all about, what you sell. And lastly, they have to trust you enough before they are going to buy. Trust is that last really crucial piece. Now, a lot of times what happens, especially uh, in this era where small businesses are having to navigate uh, like content creation and posting on social and all, you know, doing all of these marketing activities for yourselves, which as has already been stated, can be very overwhelming and it changes all, all the time, is that often what we forget about is if we are just posting content, that we still have to have people seeing that content, right? We still have to have people 
finding out about us. So it's important to think about intentional visibility. Yes, of course, people are going to come across your stuff, you know, maybe through hashtags or seeing other people share it, or the algorithm is just onto you. And so it's, you know, it's feeding you stuff that it thinks you might like, right? But rather than thinking about, oh my gosh, I got to create all this content. I got to always be putting out all this content. Think about other ways to get in front of your perfect fit people. So if you really think about it, like businesses existed for hundreds and hundreds of years before social media existed. So what were they doing? They were connecting. They were building relationships. They were networking. They were getting in front of people to let them know about their amazing company. And the good news is too, is that a lot of the ways that they used to do this was through really costly paid advertising, right? Huge billboards, um, ads in newspapers, TV commercials, and obviously those things still exist, but you don't, you don't have to do all that. So that's another bit of good news for you. Some ways that you can, that I highly, highly, highly recommend, and this goes whether you sell products or services, are things like collaborations and partnerships. So for instance, I am doing this right now. I have collaborated with Tory Burch Foundation and that way I can bring value to their folks. And it's also great, like I get in front of all of you, right? So it's, it's a win-win, right? So me being here and teaching uh, allows them to help to fulfill their mission, but it's also really great visibility for me and what I do as well, right? So speaking and guest teaching again, so I'm, I'm sort of taking two of these today in this example and putting them together but also thinking thinking about networking and communities, right? So I was actually just talking with a friend last night. She's a brilliant soap maker and she is opening a new storefront. And she was saying that a couple doors down is a pottery studio. So she has already uh, been talking to the owner of that business to see how they can collaborate, right? Is there a way that they can partner to help strengthen each other's businesses? Because it's very likely that while not every customer that wants the soap or the ceramics is going to want both, in the Venn diagram of those two businesses, there probably is a really good overlap of people who would actually be interested in both. So yeah, soap dishes with a neighboring business. Exactly, right? So I used to do a lot of, um, in previous businesses, a lot of in-person, in-person selling um, of products, of um, food, all sorts of stuff. And doing collaborations is really powerful when you serve the same audience. So it's really wonderful to think about when you're networking, when you're part of organizations and communities and all of those things. Think about, hey, how can we partner? How can we leverage what each other is great at to make something different that combines the both of us that actually serves our perfect people even better, really well. This doesn't mean you have to like go into business with anyone or anything like that, right? But there's probably people watching right now who have been like, oh yeah, I did a, like a collaboration with a friend. We did this. It was awesome. Like I'll give an example of in my business. Many years ago, a friend of mine who does um, social media management and marketing, uh, we partnered together and we hosted, um, a paid workshop, a low cost paid workshop called Get Social to Sell. So she taught folks how to utilize social media better. And then I taught folks, hey, like now that people know about you because you're using social media better, here's how you actually turn those connections into clients, right? And that was really great because we were each able to bring our expertise to people in a really unique and valuable way. Um, Yes. So from the chat, a lot of Instagram lives. Yes. Instagram lives, podcast guesting. Um, if people have YouTube channels, uh, if they do guest blogging, you can co-host things together. I mean, really the sky, the sky is the limit here on this, but collab, collab, collab. Um, you know, it's that saying like a rising tide lifts all boats. When we do things in community, it is really beneficial for all of us.
So now people are going to know about you, right? So they're going to, you've done some collabs, you've done some partnerships, you've done some networking, whatever it is, however you have gotten yourself in front of folks. Now you need to nurture the relationship, right? So you got to give people a reason to stick around. So this is where you can invite them to hang out with you wherever it is that you also show up online or in person. So this would be like, let's say you are on somebody's podcast, right? leaving um, a URL that maybe goes to something like a special code they can get to use or a special, um, like a free download or a training, something else that is going to get them into your orbit and allow you to show up and to keep fostering that relationship with them. It can even be something as simple as like, hey, follow me on social media, right? But telling them exactly where to go, right? The place where you hang out the most. Uh, And even um, a client of mine is going to uh, a conference, shouldn't have time to get new business cards. I said, don't sweat it. Make a QR code, make it, you know, make it cute, put it on your phone, have it linked to wherever you want people to connect with you. And then you can just hold your phone, they can scan it and then boom, right? You're, she's inviting them to stay connected in some other places. So you can think about providing content that is fun, engaging, and valuable, right? So let's say you send out a weekly newsletter, make it interesting, make it fun. You don't have to worry about making it really stiff and formal and professional and, and all of that. Like think about your brand, think about how you show up in your brand for your perfect people. Think about what your people would be, you know, interested in hearing about, right? And that way they're going to open it. They're going to want to pay attention. They're going to want to keep following. Um, And then you can also think about special offers and incentives. So this is more common in the product uh, space, but I do want to add a little like asterisk here. I don't ever want anyone feeling like you have to deeply discount or over give or anything like that in order to nurture these new connections. Think about making sure that it's something that is sustainable and reasonable for your business. And if you're not sure, then, you know, maybe if you have friends or um, somebody that you've hired to help you with your business, you can strategize together and come up with some great ideas for that. But please, please, please do not overgive. Do not cut too deeply into your time or your profit margins here um, when it comes to special offers and incentives. And I'm gonna, uh, I'll give you an example today. You'll see, you'll see this in action. So hopefully it'll give you another example. So now think about community, right? So Community is incredibly valuable to creating raving fans. So how can you make people feel like they're a part of your community before they even make a purchase, right? So there might be some brands you can think of right now where you're like, oh yeah, they already do a really good job of this, right? Where you feel welcome, you feel like you're part of the the crowd, even if you've never given them a dime. Right. So think about leveraging social sharing and human behavior so that they can start spreading the word about you and have fun with it. So some examples of this would be like if you have special lingo for your community. Right. So maybe you have like some special fun words that are connected to your brand that you use all of the time, right? So things that when people are in your orbit, they're in your community, it's like shorthand, right? It's it's something that they, they get and they feel connected with. You can also think about um, taking some of that and turning it into things like hashtags that are unique to your business and your brand. Um, and then also tagging, right? So Remember at the very beginning, I was like, if, you know, when you have an aha or a takeaway, something you want to capture screen, you know, take a picture with your phone, screenshot it, whatever, and then share on Instagram and tag me. Well, that's because later when I'm done, I can go into my DMS and see who all tagged me. Right. And then I can reach out and say, hi, thank you for coming. You know, it was great having you there. Right. That makes us connected. That makes us now community, right? So if you think about this, think about it in terms of businesses you follow, businesses that you're maybe already doing this with, or that you feel do a really great job. Because chances are, 
because there's brands right now that you are a raving fan of, you're already sharing them organically, right? If you go into your favorite smoothie place and they make really, you know, Instagrammable worthy smoothies, going to take that pic, you're going to post it, you're going to tag that business. And then when you share it, other people, not everyone, but some are going to be like, hang on, what's this, what's this business? That's, that looks really good. Right. And they are going to check it out. Or let's say you are, um, gosh, I don't even know. You got a really cute new sweater and you take a selfie, you post it, you tag them, right? Do you see how this works? Right. People like we are organically sharing all of the time, even though nobody's telling us to, nobody's asking us to, nobody's compensating us in any way. We're doing it because this is how humans are. We, we connect with each other. We like to share. So the concept of raving fans is really hinges on what we naturally want to do anyways, right? You try a new great restaurant. You want to share about it. You work with an amazing copywriter or web designer or something. You want to share about it, right? So with that in mind, think about the fact that because you love to share, That means people will love to share about you. And chances are a lot of you here right now already have people who excitedly share about you all of the time, right? So this is, this is great news. Okay. So now as we get into the home stretch, right? So this is really where we're going to go into those actions and activities that kind of help seal the deal on becoming raving fans and becoming clients as well, clients and customers. Uh, But just remember, we already set the foundation for making our perfect people aware of us, making them understand what we're all about, like what our vibe is to see if it matches. Now they're paying attention. Now they're hanging out. Now we're nurturing the relationship. We're not making them feel obligated to make any purchase. We're allowing them in the community. We're uh, continuing to show up and to give value because For each of us, that time between somebody finding out about us and spending money with us, there are a lot of factors that go into play. Some of us, it might be the nature of our business. It might be a real quick turnaround time. Other people, it could take, like I've had clients where their average time um, before somebody becomes a client from awareness to conversion is like 18 months, right? So just keep in mind that uh, it's about relationship building and maintaining the relationship over time and not rushing things. So I love this quote by Maya Angelou because I feel like it perfectly sums up this last section, which is that I've learned that people will forget what you said and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So chances are right now you have a brand, a company, a person who runs a small business where you are just consistently like wowed by how valued you feel as a buyer, right? Even if it's maybe you had, you know, something went wrong, something went sideways, right? And they made it right. The way they communicated with you, the way that they took care of it, it made you a raving fan. It made you a customer for life, right? So I want us to really think about this, right? Think about how there is a way to regardless of what happens in the transaction, that if we can allow people to have a good experience, they will remember how it feels to do business with us. And that will help them to be a raving fan. So I want you to think about your own buyer experience. Again, whether you sell a product or service, really think about what does that process look like? What is the process you're taking them through from the brand awareness and the nurturing and the being in community to actually giving you money? How does it make them feel right now, if you had to guess? Also think like, is it easy for them to find what they need, right? Is it a pleasant, enjoyable, easeful experience? And are there any gaps? And it's okay if there are gaps, because this is just, again, more opportunity to refine what we're already doing. Businesses never set it and forget it, right? There's no top of the mountain we get to, and then we're just coasting. There's always going to be a need for flexibility and refinement and growth here and there. So thinking about this allows you to identify if there are any gaps and then think about how you want to fill them. So some areas to think about when you're going through your current buyer experience 
if you're somebody that sells a service like I do, you can think about like, what is the ease of booking in, right? Do people book directly in? If so, is there like a call booking link that's easy to find? It's that's easy to use, or maybe you need to do a sales call first. Is that easy to find for people? Also, like if they have other questions, is your contact info clear? Is it easy to get to? All of those things, right? And and I want you to think about not just your website, but your social presence and other places that you show up as well, right? And this could be something maybe you set a reminder for every six months to just go through, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, your website, wherever you show up, and just make sure are the links working? Is the contact info clear? Has anything changed? Um, all of those things. Then you can think about things like reminders, right? Do you have a call coming up, an appointment, anything like that? Are they getting email reminders? Is it easy to find Zoom links? All of those things. Client onboarding, making payments, et cetera, et cetera. And if you think, if you sell products, I want you to think about um, website navigation. Now, website navigation is also important if you sell services, but it's especially important if you sell products, especially if you sell a lot of products. So this could be things like, are your product groups, is it categorized, right? Is it kind of just a free for all when someone shows up or is it easy to find? Oh, there's, you know, uh, pants and tops and, you know, hats, et cetera. Um, and then once people click in, are the product descriptions clear, right? Are, are there good quality photos? Can people really get an idea of what it's, the thing is all about before they buy it, especially if they can't, see it or feel it in person, right? And then think about FAQs. So are there frequently asked questions that you get? Can you collect them and house them somewhere that's easy to find? Because what we don't want to have happen is for a potential buyer to get overwhelmed or get confused and not be able to find the, an the answer. And instead of having them do extra work to find it, to hunt you down, to ask, they just bounce. They just leave, right? We don't, we don't want that. And lastly, don't forget to surprise and delight. So think of all the ways businesses you spend money with already surprise and delight you, right? These are things that make you feel special and valued. And they don't have to be big. They don't have to be audacious. They don't have to be expensive, right? But just thinking of the ways that the places that you love to spend money, the places you're already a raving fan, how do they make you feel special and valued? And then think about what are some ways that you can do that in your own business, right? And I will give you one that I use. So I love getting fun mail. We all get so much junk mail that when something fun comes in the mail for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's fun mail, right? It's happy mail. So I love to do that for my clients. So I use a service I'm not uh, that I'm a raving fan of. I'm not being paid to tell you this or anything like that, right? I am just such a raving fan of this company called Punk Post. They contract with artists who make you like pick uh, card templates. They have all these card templates. You select your template. You select uh, what you want to write on the inside, the style of font that you want, um, and then you put in the person's name, address, they take care of all of it. So I don't have to make a trip to the post office, which is amazing. And they do beautiful work. Their cards are so colorful. The artists have like beautiful hand lettering and all of this stuff. And it knocks the socks off my clients. It's so simple. It costs less than $10 every time. I don't even have to leave the house, right? But people are always blown away. And I know there are other services that do things like that too. It's so little, but it makes such a big difference in making my clients feel special and valuable. And then lastly, ramping up repeat um, business and referrals. So empower and encourage your existing satisfied buyers to send new people your way. Make it easy and enjoyable for them to want to return. And again, keep this, you can keep this really simple too. No need to overcomplicate it, right? Just start really small, start really simple, um, and then you can iterate as you go. And lastly, as we finish up, if you aren't sure what your client experience is like already, just ask. Because chances are you already got some raving fans, right? You already have those ride or die people who love you, who are already sharing about you. They're you know already coming back uh, to spend more money with you, right? So see if you can, you know, send them a survey or do, you know, a 15 minute Zoom with them 
to see if they have any suggestions for you about ways that you could improve your buyer experience or things you could incorporate or things that they might love as um, like in like a referral program, things like that. And if you're like, I don't know, or that feels really awkward, right? I don't know who to ask or feel that feels a little bit like uncomfortable or vulnerable. Think about friends you have that you really trust, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, have them run through as if they were a customer or a client to see what is working, what, where there might be some gaps, right? And then get their feedback and you can take that and run with it. So lastly, I want to share a couple of things with you. So I have a free resource on how to get more clients, whether you sell a product or a service or both. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But remember earlier, I was like, hey, incentives, special offers, right? So I have one for you. I have a workshop, a really quick two-hour workshop called Rad Clients on Repeat. And in it, I share a simple, repeatable system for getting clients regularly without you having to work nonstop. And as a special thank you to both the Tory Birch Foundation for having me and to all of you for being here, if you use code Tory 200 at checkout, and there's no expiration on this, it'll only be $97. And you can get there from either radclients.com or a free resource they have for you. So I have a short 20-minute training called how to get clients without being creepy, creepy, meaning you don't have to send any of those like icky or intrusive, like, Hey girl DMS, right? If you go to ericatebbins.com forward slash Tori Birch, you can get it. And once you get that free training, you will also be redirected to the rad clients on repeat workshop. So I wanted to be sure you knew about the coupon code first, so you can take advantage of it. If that suits your needs right now. Uh, And as we finish up, I just want to say, I would love it if you followed me on the gram, even if you didn't post anything and tag me, slide into my DMs, say hello, so I can say hello back. I also have over 150 episodes on sleaze free sales and marketing and business growth. It's at Sell It Sister, and you can find it on all the platforms. And then you can also learn more. I have podcast transcripts. I have blog posts. I have all sorts of things over at Erica Tebbins. Dot com. So that's where you can find me. I'm going to hit stop share and we can do some Q&A. Okay, Erica, thank you so much. Uh, you've given us so much to think about. Um, so let's, I just want to go back to some of the things you said um, as far as uh, the acquisition part of the presentation. Um, so how can a founder, um, when they're assessing their company, kind of doing a vibe check, for lack mm-hmm. of a better term, on how do you suggest they poke holes in their idea or message and mission so they can really show up the best? Ooh, yeah. So I would say a couple of things, kind of like with the buyer experience, uh, having other people go through it and see to find your opportunities to spruce it up. Mm-hmm. I would also say have people check in right now, like have them look at what you're already putting out there. And in the way that I did, you know, with Tori Birch, be like, Hey, can you give me like three to five adjectives that come up? Right. So you can kind of get the pulse on, you know, if if you ask 10 different people, what their thoughts are, like, what are the vibes that they are already getting? So that's one, just to see if like what you're wanting to put out there is actually landing with folks. The second thing I would say, um, is you can also do some like voice of the customer research, right? Go to people who you know are the people that you want to be serving and you Mm -hmm. can get their feedback as well to see if it's really resonating with them. And the last thing I would say is don't force it, right? As micro Mm -hmm. business owners, as founders of small companies, we naturally have to wear a lot of hats. We have to be often the personal face of a brand, even if the company is not named directly after us, right? At least for a while before we can build it up and hire lots more people, right? So go with the path of least resistance. And I'll give kind of like a silly example. If you are somebody who is like, okay, well, I'll like use me, right? Like I'm boldly colored. Like I have like a sparkly headband, purple hair, whatever, like I'm kind of loud. I'm kind of quirky. Sometimes I might curse like in my marketing, right? Like this is just how I can authentically show up in the most easeful way for me. 
And so I know that that's not going to vibe with everyone. Um, but because, you know, because I have to be showing up and creating content and talking to people, it is easier for me to build my brand around what feels most authentic to me. So that way, every time I'm having to show up, I'm not like, oh, time to put on my like professional business person face, right? And then go out and try to like pretend I'm somebody I'm not. That's hard. That's really exhausting. So I would rather just build a brand that I feel truly comfortable in and trust that there are enough people out there where even if they don't have purple hair and they don't want purple hair, they still, they're not like turned away by it. Right. They're like, Oh, that's, she seems like somebody I would like to learn from. So, yeah. And to kind of, um, piggyback off of that, well, what is, uh, maybe the most efficient or effective way for someone who, you know, now they know, um, you know, they've, they've established what their, um, customers are looking for, but then how do they, um, efficiently anticipate their needs without burning out? Oh, okay. So a couple of things. Um, this is where when you build that good, like sort of trusted community around your brand, you can also get really good feedback, right? People will feel comfortable being in dialogue with you about different things. And especially as you go and you see, you know, what is selling, what is not, what is resonating, what are you hearing from people? Then you can better assess like, ooh, is this something that I actually want to do? Is this something I want to incorporate? Is this, because you don't have to go, just because somebody asked you for something doesn't mean you have to offer it, right? But it can allow you to see like, oh, maybe there is an opportunity here. And this is where I go back to raving fans are such a powerful asset for your brand because these are already people who know like and trust you and they're they're raving about you all the time they want to see you win so then when as you're cultivating raving fans as you're building community all of that you can go right to them and be like hey is there something that you like like what's going on for you right now that maybe i would be able to help with right you could survey them you can have conversation you could do voice of the customer research and then you get some really good honest feedback and from there you can decide okay as the founder do i want to incorporate this and if so how right that is such such excellent advice um to help us all really hone in on what you know the needs of everyone really and and um work work smarter not harder um yes. so we had a congress i'm sorry a question come in a little bit earlier um someone said they find it really challenging to find collaborations and partnerships um and so what advice would you have on how to start oh this is such a good question so thank you thank you question asker um this is where that networking and connecting piece comes in first, right? Because yes, it would be a little awkward to just like kind of go to somebody you don't have any relationship with and be like, hey, do you want to do something together, right? Um, so thinking about like, especially now, there are so many online communities, right? It used to just be like back in the day, because I've been running businesses for a while, you only had your local chamber of commerce, 7 a.m. weekly breakfast, and you get what you got, right? That's, that's it. Like if your ideal people weren't there or whatever, like it's, that's just how it was. But now there are so many communities, right? So like, uh, e like even on this, I saw people connecting in the chat, right? So going to places where you're um, colleagues are right. Where people that you could network, that you could collaborate with all of that, finding those places, be they in person or virtual or whatever, and just start connecting with people that way, make it a really intentional part of your marketing activity. No, it's not creating, you know, a reel or writing a blog post or whatever, but it's powerful because you are then going to leverage those relationships in order to open up other avenues with people. And then you can start to get a better idea because it might not even be that person, but it might be that that person knows somebody else that they want to intro 
you, you know, introduce the two of you, and then the two of you end up collaborating on something in the future. Ooh, that is great, great advice. Um, okay, so we have another question about, um, basically, once you get a raving fan in the door, um, how do you keep them engaged long term, grow with them and just uh, let them know over time that they're priority? Yeah, oh, this is a great question, too. So um, I would say it kind of depends on, you know, who you serve and what what it is that you sell. But there are lots of different ways you can do this, right? So things like um, I know on Instagram, uh, for instance, there's like a close friends list, right? So you could always have certain people that get added to the close friends list that maybe get like sneak peeks, extra behind the scenes. Um, there are also private podcasts you can do, right? So people can subscribe to your private podcast and be kind of like the insiders. People could be um, on your street team or your brand ambassador, or um, they could get special um, separate like email uh, newsletter or, you know, different promotions a little bit early, stuff like that. Um, so I think that there are lots of different ways that you can keep nurturing those relationships long term. But I think so think about, you know, what makes the most sense for you, for your clientele based on what you serve, and, and all of that, right? Because if, again, if like, if you sell hand cream, having a private podcast, probably not going to make the best sense for your, for your brand. Um, but it could even be things like, you know, if you host a special, um, classes, trainings, workshops, um, pop-up coaching, co-working, like there's a lot of different opportunities where we can all get creative and be like, how can I give people a little bit more access or behind the scenes or sneak peeks or, um, special incentives to want to like really stick around and participate. Hmm. Yeah. I really like that framing. Um, and then to go back, I mean, I know you mentioned the close friends list, um, but speaking specifically about social media followers, um, how can someone who does, maybe they have, you know, a big following, but they, they're not seeing the sales. How, what, how do people make the bridge from social media followers to sales? Mm, great question. Okay. So, uh, one thing I would say is make sure that you are actually selling and people might be like rolling their eyes, like, but I am Erica. What are you talking about? Here's what I mean. A lot of times we are really, really good about posting and like talking about stuff and whatever. Um, but we sometimes shy away from making the direct ask or the direct, very direct call to action. Right. So the, this would be stuff like saying like, Hey, I have, you know, this like VIP day, whatever. Um, and direct people like, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to the link in your bio to learn more? Do you want them to send you a DM? Do you want them to book a call? Like actually telling people how you get that thing, right? If you have a new line of um, headbands or something that you sell, like do people know where they can get them? Or are you just assuming that they know or that they'll go? So I think it's really, really, really important to make it as easy as possible for people. Tell them what you want them to do, right? If it's to go sign up for your newsletter, don't just say like, I have a newsletter. Be like, here's where you can find it. Or even like making it as simple as like, you know, you can't share a hyperlink in the caption on Instagram, but you can in your stories, you can link right through. So rather than making somebody go back to your bio, find the link, do it, like make it easy for them to direct them exactly to the thing. Um, cause a lot of times we are so close to what we do. We're like, Oh, it's just obvious. Like if people want to work with me, if people want to give me money, like they just will, but it's, it's not always. So it's really good to just be explicit to say like, especially if it's a service to be like, oh, this VIP day is perfect. If you, you know, you're an established entrepreneur and you need to I don't know, overhaul your website, I can do it in a day or in a week and like kind of put some parameters and then say like, if this is resonating, here's what I would like you to do next. And then actually let them know like, hey, this is something you can purchase. That is great. Those are all um, wonderful ideas. So 
Um, so hopefully the followers will start buying. Um, okay, so another question we had um, coming at registration. What tips do you have for dealing with a customer who has had a negative experience with your business? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say try to see if you can just open a dialogue and just get curious with them around mm -hmm. how you can make it better, right? And this doesn't mean, right, like sometimes there are just people who are not a right fit, right? We can do all the branding and all, like we can do all of that in the world. And sometimes we still get somebody through the doors, you know, digital or physical doors that is just not the right fit, right? So this doesn't always mean that we have to bend over backward and like, do everything under the sun to make it perfect because sometimes it just, it just won't be right. But I would say, don't be afraid to be like, oops, we messed up. Uh, we didn't live up to your expectations. Um, you know, how can we make it right? Like, can we do this instead? Or can we do that? Or can we offer this or whatever? Because I think a lot of times people get so discouraged with companies. They just feel like they're not seen, they're not heard, they're not taken seriously. So by offering that to people, by allowing them to feel seen, heard, and taken seriously, that alone can shift the whole conversation. And then you can just creatively problem solve around what you want to do after that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, another question we had, um, is can a business owner um, use some of what we've talked about today to approach um, potential corporate clients or establish those relationships? Yes. So I would say for those folks, that is really where that, you know, knowing who is the best fit from a corporate angle, right? So which companies are you trying to connect with and how does it, you know, does it match up with um, who you're wanting to serve, right? So obviously like there's thousands of companies, right? So it's about making an intentional list of what would be the types of companies that would be best for you to partner with. And that is where that second part of what I talked about, about like creating and nurturing relationships is going to be really, really, really crucial. So thinking about ways of how can you already start to be connecting to get your foot in the door, right? To um, foster those relationships from the get-go, or even just like to find out who their point people are, right? Like who their their key people are, if you have a rock solid pitch for something that you want to bring to them, getting a little bit creative and looking like who would be the best person to bring this to on the team? Because it's, pro it's, you know, depending on the size of the company, it might not be the CEO, right? So figure out how you can show, hey, I'm here. I am maybe making like a bit of a cold pitch, but I'm going to show you why it's worth it and why what I do will be immensely valuable to your company. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Erica. Yeah. Uh, so I think we 